Okay, can you hear me now? All right. No, still no sound. Unmute. Now you can hear. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, my phone. Okay, we are back. We're watching two cameras with one camera. My daughter's going to take care of the other one. I will come back and talk to you and tell you again that I am Liz from Liza Jane Designs in Afton, Minnesota. I'm glad you guys can hear me now. Let's just start over, do over. Fresh, Fresh start. Okay. We are working today here in Afton on the St. Croix River Valley, east of the Twin Cities, on a box. So it is a pretty large, I would say 30 inches or so by 12. Um, and I did one side yesterday. So what the, the topic of our session here today is really how you can use the beautiful IOD transfers. So this is the botanist which makes a gorgeous full-size motif with all sorts of swags and swirls and it's beautiful on dressers as is shown. This is on a, a big bench, but we don't always have those large pieces of furniture or decor that we want to use this for. These guys can be, um, chopped up and reassembled kind of Frankenstein style and used in so many ways. So that's what we're going to do today. I'll show you a little bit about this box that I, I said it was just something I found at a flea market or something. And what I did, can we see these legs here? These are chair spindles that my husband um, said I had to clear out my chair cemetery. So I had, I don't know, 50, 60 wooden chairs and I couldn't bear to just get rid of them. I chopped up all the spindles, all the good looking ones found a real great space and these all cut to the same size and then screwed into the box. So the, the box has legs now, right? I'm going to turn this on its side because we're going to be working on, on this part. We're using that botanist, like I said, the botanist transfer. And I'm going to make this side really mirror the other side. Oh, we are from Colorado and Texas and Southern California. Hello, Jane. It's so good to have you here. Um, so here's our, our transfer pack. I'm going to open this guy up and we're going to focus first on this piece and I'm going to chop it up. I'm going to Frankenstein it. This will be a Franken box or something like that, right? So we're going to use this piece. And we're going to use this piece. And I'm probably going to be able to get everything for this side out of those two pieces and have some left. We're going to decorate the sides and ends as well. So what I've done so far is to do this and get it ready. I chose a couple of colors of paint that are very close together and kind of blended them a little bit darker around the edges and just smooth that out to give it a little bit of interest. So there's some color variation in here. Not absolutely necessary to do that. You could just paint it a solid color. And then I put a top coat on, a clear water-based top coat, because that is what transfers like the best. They, um, they like being on a non-porous slick surface. Can they work on other things? Yes. But when we talk best practice, that is the best practice, is to have a sealed 
surface that has been allowed to dry. You want fully dry Uh, and we're just going to cut this up. It's going to be going here. My daughter is with us today. Um, the camera's on its mount, though. So, Stacy, do you see a ruler anywhere? I just want to gauge the center of this better than just guessing if I can do that. Because a, a balanced presence is going to be important here, right? So I'm going to be using Bata Nist right there. So I'm going to cut this one off and I am just going around some of these leaves. I don't want this swag to be included in it. So just cutting it off and I'll be able to use those. I'm going to leave a little more of this flower. Kind of just come around there like that. Well, you're cutting that from the screw the I think we're good without really. Yeah, we'll be all right. It's standing. One of our legs popped off. You always have to be agile and ready to pivot. <coughs> lost, if we lost a leg. We'll, we'll put it back on later. But there is our, it'll be like that. So this is the center where that line is right there. I'm going to measure this out, right? Miriam, good to have you here. Stacy, thanks for getting the audio to work. Yes, thanks, Stacy. Um, 31 and a half. So that makes the, it's like 15 and three quarters. See how I did that math right here in my head? Amazing, right? Trust me, that was amazing. <laughs> okay. So I just scratched a little line with my fingernail because it's a general idea, right? We want it to be generally in the center. I've got a line for that. We know that with transfers, we don't want to touch the printed part. So I keep my fingers on the carrier sheet and I'm going to come to the edge, get that center. Right there, I want to just come off the bottom and then smooth that out. So you see there's there's extra grid there. I need to apply this before. Hello, Michelle. So glad that you are here today. Oh, we have Carolyn from Massachusetts. I grew up in Massachusetts. Carolyn, where are you in Massachusetts? I'm using the stick that we know comes with our transfers and just applying pressure to get that ink and design to release from the carrier paper. It is already doing that. Sometimes the smaller spots like letters can take a little more aggressive rubbing. So we're gonna rub those off. And I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it gets a little bit cloudy. Generally, when the inks are released, you can tell. It's not always the case. You get a little air under there. Sometimes it hastens the process. Hasten, that's not a word you get to say very often. All right. I am kind of a word geek. Yes, you love the sound that, that that it makes. It kind of crackles and releases. It is a very satisfying sound. I think a lot of the fun of uh, creating here is it's a full-on sensory experience. It's the sounds and the feels. This is how I get my arm work out. My husband foolishly belongs to a gym. I think all you have to do is put on some transfers and rub, rub, rub. You get the best looking biceps around or whatever these are. I don't even know what they are, but uh, whatever. Oh, you can see I am not a gym person. 
we're going to keep doing here. All right. Oh, hey, Denise. Glad you are here. We've almost got this first half on. So this uh, transfer, the botanist is, you know, it's one of the new ones. It was in the latest release. And I love the colors and the delicateness and the floral. It's like a beautiful watercolor. And it looks good on so many different background colors. Next door to us here in Afton is a nursery called Horticulture. And I kind of want to make them a great big sign where instead of saying botanist inside, I would put the name of their store and use this um, outline of it as, as a big sign. So using the whole transfer in that way, I think we got it. Yep, there we go. This is at the top. I'm going to give this a quick rub down, make sure all those edges are adhered. And there we go. So that guy is on. We're going to line this one up in the way that I do that. Again, don't touch the printed area. Float it above. We don't want it to touch the surface until we're ready to commit to its location, right? So I'm looking at the lines of the, of the words. I'm going to keep those straight. I have to say, Sally and Josie, the IOD sisters, they do such a great job of deciding where to draw a line i guess for the so none of the letters are chopped in half and those kind of details i think are part of what i love about iod design they, they do think of everything and they divide these pieces out so that when we put them back together we have the best likelihood of a of a very very good match so just applying this guy, same way we did, rubbing and rubbing. Do we have any questions? Oh, we've got a lot of first time watchers. And Carolyn, thank you for your kind words. Uh, I love Iron Orchid Designs and I love sharing it with anybody who wants to hear about it. And sometimes at my house, I share it with people who are tired of hearing about it, but they're usually kind and they'll listen. So when I get to be on a live video or here in the shopping studio and talk to people who are like me and, you know, kind of can't get enough and want to know more and they can talk about color and design all day long, well, that is a super treat for me. Yes, welcome Janine. So we're going to just get this guy on and then our design talents will kick in when we look at the other pieces of the transfer and try to figure out how to make them just look lovely on this surface. I'm excited about doing the sides of it too. Now for me, you know, I have a shop here in Afton. I may be using this box as a display piece. So I might put some of my um, wood substrates and cutting board blanks and all the things like that. that that's what I might put in here but I think it would also make a really fabulous uh, flower display, whether, I don't think I would put dirt right in the, in the box. I think that might get to be too heavy, but something like three shallow pots with some flowers, that would, I think that would be beautiful, whether they were real natural flowers or dried flowers. 
I think that'd be a striking. If it wasn't raining today, I was going to bring some hydrangeas from my house and try those out. I think that would make a beautiful display to have them kind of close to the box. So we'll try out different staging options. My daughter, Stacy, stick your head over here, Stace. You're bossy today. Yeah, come on over here. You guys know Stacy. Mm -hmm. If you've watched before, and if you've not watched before, hey Kathleen. Hey guys. Um, Stacy is a master of staging. She, she and my partner Jill here in the shop have they've transformed the space in here this week. It was so pleasant to come back to. And we did it while she was away. Yeah. As to not interfere with our magic. <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> so I wouldn't interfere with your magic. I thought you meant you weren't going to interfere with my magic. No. Well, vice versa. No one was interfering with anybody's magic. There is such and thing. And it was magic. It there was is magic. such thing as too much magic. There, no, there is no such thing as too much magic. I'll agree to disagree. <laughs> I suppose you could have conflicting magic styles. That could that could get confusing. Too but many wands in the kettle. Too many wands. Too many wands in the kitchen. That's what it is. I like too many wands in the kettle. That's that, that was good. We'll go with her first instinct. Want too many wands in the kettle. What do you guys think? All right, almost off. We got a little bit more here. So this was sealed and has dried for a while. So we're getting a nice release on there. How's that look? I think that looks fabulous. So I'm gonna give that a, a burnish. Which just means, you know, rub it down real well. Carol, Carolyn would like to know where you are. Oh, hello, Carolyn. I think when I was talking about that earlier, the microphone wasn't working. So thank you for reminding me. I am located in Minnesota in the um, St. Croix River Valley. We are about 20 miles. I think 20 miles east of St. Paul. Mm -hmm. So we really are part of the Twin Cities metro area. A lot of people commute into the cities from here. Uh, but we're in a beautiful river valley. The St. Croix River comes through our area here and divides us from Wisconsin, the great state of Wisconsin. Too many wands, that's right, Denise. Too many wands spoiled the brew. <laughs> the stew. The stew, no, it's a brew, it's a witch's brew. Oh. But we're good witches. Okay, sorry guys. Um, I'm getting an idea of where I wanna place this. So I think on the other side, I focused more on this corner they don't have to be the same, but I think I want to do something, you know, similar to that. So I'm just playing around with the placement and I'll cut off other areas. I think I want to have that ribbon. What do you think, Stace? How's that look? Pretty good. All right, what are you putting on the other side? I'm, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to mirror what's here basically over there so I can cut this one to let us play around with that too. And then a little bit of a connection right here, a sweeping connection right there. So let me, and what I'm doing, I don't have to cut exactly, but I don't want to leave pieces that don't make sense by which I mean, I don't want to cut, chop a leaf right in half or have a stem just sticking out with nothing going to it. So I think that looks good. We've just left that design. Um, That's going to be the connector. This could be the connector. Yeah. That could oh, be, like this. this could be over here. Yeah. What do you guys think? Well, Carolyn, where are you from? All right, I'm going to do this one first. So we're going to go from the corner to like right up in here. 
There are so many great stockists all over the country, all over the world. I, of course, would love to meet each and every one of you guys. But I have to say, every stockist that I know loves to have a relationship with his or her customers. We are mostly groups of women, but we have some really fabulous guys that um, own shops and operate as stockists and have brilliant ideas. So find someone that um, you just kind of resonate with. We all have different styles and different aesthetics. So shop around. Maybe you'll have several favorite stockists. That's an okay thing too. We try not to be jealous here. So I know that watching a person rub transfers may not be the most enticing and exciting thing. If you'd like to talk amongst yourselves, that would be okay too, but ask any questions you have. I see Denise, you're from Ohio. All right. If it sticks, put it back down. It's not off enough. And we'll just rub and get that stickiness away. Again, my main thing I want to convey to all y'all, I learned that in the South, all y'all is that um, while the designs are beautiful out of the package and can be used on a large scale project as is, they're so versatile that you can add them in smaller chunks and create a design that is going to be pleasing to you. It. And it'll be kind of one of a kind. Another thing that is awesome, we're all working with the same materials, but we use them in such different ways. I thought I wanted the ribbon, but now I don't think I do because I don't have the ribbon over here. So I'm going to cut that away. And believe me, I am not going to let it go to waste. It'll come in play somewhere. We're just going to cut off the bow. I'll leave a little ribbon there and kind of come in and fussy cut around to get that guy gone, but gone in a way that this looks natural still. So I cut it away. We'll use it somewhere. I'm gonna put this guy approximately, you know, just to be symmetrical with that. Does that look pretty good? I got the blue, I could come down with pink some more. That one's more like this. All right, here's the thing. Measuring tools, doesn't have to be perfect, but this is coming kind of from the corner and hits there at about seven inches. So let's go seven inches. It'd be like seven, hits that in the middle. So seven, here's our seven. Let's hit that in the middle of that. And yeah, go from there. I'm gonna push it up a bit because I wanna catch these flowers. I will cut away some, not on the line because I'm putting this on in a, in a different way. Um, yes, mixing and matching and layering transfers. Um, for me, the, the real fun in all of this begins when we start, you know, using the paint inlays and the, and the stamps and the molds and everything together. Sometimes um, throwing in a little decoupage or a little hand painting. So I want to share with you a little tip when we're done applying these transfers. Something that I like to do to make the project seem more hand painted. I did that on the other side, but 
I don't think we looked at that long enough that you would have noticed, but we'll, we'll do it again on this side after we get these transfers applied. Be brave, absolutely. I have a sign here in my shop. I, I named it as the motto for us here in 2023. It says, be brave enough to suck at something new. And I know my daughter thought that was kind of negative when I first put it together. For me, it is not at all negative. It's just a reminder that when we try new things that are challenging, sometimes we're not going to be great at it at first. So it's not like we will suck forever. We will try. We'll have some success. We'll mess up a little bit. And we'll learn. And every time, could just get a little bit better and a little more comfortable with whatever we're working with. If is anyone in our room here? We have a couple of guests. Anyone? We have a live audience. We have a live audience. Yay! Yay. <laughs> no, that's not canned laughter. That is a live audience. Um, Ira Glass. Anyone know Ira Glass? He. He does a radio program on public radio called This American Life. And Ira Glass has a wonderful quotation that I have on the front of one of my art journals. It talks about how no, it's like nobody tells you when you're starting out that your work's not going to be very good. You want to do this because you have excellent taste and you have some innate desire to create, but when you start, I'm, and I'm paraphrasing, Iris says it much better, but basically that um, you need to accept that your, your first work, if you're brave, and if you are not just trying to fit into a box, but trying to be yourself and discover what you like, your first work's probably not gonna be that great. And Ira says, just kind of accept that and roll with it as part of the process. So do not be discouraged when you're brave enough to suck at something new. The, um, the skill and the, the techniques come with practice. It's your desire to create that keeps you going. So don't be discouraged. Just do not be discouraged and hang with it. You'll find the things you love. You'll do more of them and less of the things you don't. And at some point, you'll have your own style of creating and it'll be a fun, wonderful thing. So the, the sucking at something new part doesn't last that long. You're like the Brene Brown of art. <laughs> Well, that is a high compliment indeed. I don't know that I would go that far, but yes, I do love Renee Brown. Okay, so we have badum, and what we're gonna do now, badum is an art term, right? Badum, badum baday. We're gonna go like this and hook those two together. So I'm just gonna cut a chunk, being brave. Um, something else to know is if I cut off too much, it's okay. I can add transfers over transfers. We can hook them up in that way. So I'm going kind of quickly because we are live. But I think adding that there and putting some of, yeah, I'm good with that. What do you think? Stace, you want to take a rub at that? Pretty hard. Keep it in place. What did? Where's um, Jackie, Jackie, Jackie? Peggy is here. Hi, Peggy. And Kathy. Good morning, Kathy. Kathy's from my neck of the woods here. Um, the black and white florals. I have not used those yet. If you're meaning, well, I use the older ones that are winter song wreath. Um, and then the newer, I have not even used on a project yet. So 
So we're going to hook this guy on. All right, I'm going to pick that back up and Frankenstein it a little bit more. This weave, to me, doesn't make sense where I was going to join it. So I'm going to knock that back to just be a stem and hook it there and there. Yeah. Ta-da, ta-da, right? That looks good. Um, the newer IOD Maze Floral Transfer. Carolyn has used it. I think it's amazing when I compare it to the, you know, our, our older, may I use the stick? The older winter song was black, black lines and whatever you paint, put them on, would show through. So if we put them on this green, it would be green inside of the black lines, but the new maze is actually white. So the flowers show up as white on whatever background you do. And mixing those together is really fabulous, I think. So we're gonna do that. Thank you, Stacy. Great job over there. You guys are still with me. I thank you for that. You have embraced that saying. Awesome. It really is. It's like I have found, I'm th morphing into Brene Brown for a minute again here, that when I, when I let myself be brave in creating, I let myself be braver in the rest of my world, world and life as well. You know, it teaches me that it, I don't have to be perfect in any aspect. I jump in and try my best and it's going to be okay. What doesn't come out the way I intend, I can pivot, I can change, I can learn. And it really is very freeing. Uh, my good friend, J Jane Vellante, was on here, and I've learned much of that also from her, Brene Brown and Jane Vellante, that we don't need to be afraid and we don't need to be perfect. We just need to be brave, go for it, and adjust from there. So there we have a very, I think, appealing kind of design on this box by cutting up parts of the botanist transfer. We have been online for 36 minutes, so I think we have enough time to do a little bit on the sides here. I'm not sure how to get that in the camera. Uh, you can we are you gonna lift it this way? Yeah. So if I put it up, it's too high. Nope. Look. If I do this, well, I can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that doesn't work. So I think here we're gonna put paper towels underneath here and hold it up just a bit. There we go. Get my head out of the way. Right, it's gonna be wiggly here, so if you have epilepsy or I'm going to grab some other chunks oh, of the transfer, and we're just going to add some swags here on these sides. And then I want to share a tip with you that I think just adds the finishing final touch to make this appear more like it was hand-painted versus, you know, simply applying a transfer, although transfers are, you know, just gorgeous. There's no need to, you know, hide the fact that we're using transfers. But adding a little touch to make it appear more um, hand-painted, I think, is fun, too. So it doesn't take long. We'll do that at the end. I'm going to cut away some of this ribbon. And again, I'm not throwing any of it away. It will come into play somewhere on some project. I'm deciding as I go here that I don't want this to come to the end. I just want it, you know, somewhere in the center. So what do you think of that, Stace? <clears throat> Pretty good? There? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think it's fun to uh, 
create with people. We, we have our own styles, but we learn from each other and just, it's just so much, it's just so much fun. All right, made a different decision. I'm gonna cut away the rest of that ribbon. I do not like how it was sticking out. So staying nimble, making decisions, not letting that touch anything it shouldn't. There. Back, not touching the inks, getting that from corner to corner. And we'll just do one of these corners. I gotta get my head down here to see. There, I like that. You wanna grab a second stick, Stace, and we'll both do this. We will, we will apply transfers in tandem. So here we go. You can have two sticks in the same row, but never two wands. Never two wands. <laughs> Too many chefs spoil the broth. The brew. The brew. The transfer sticks can be handled by any number of creative makers, though. As long as you don't pop each other. So where are we here? Mara with Vintage Retail is good at mixing and matching transfers. Oh, Mara is good at so very many things. Mara's amazing. You're getting into my scraping. All right. So. I, see, sometimes there can be too many sticks, too many wands spoiling the brew. <laughs> Am I the spoiler? No, no I mean, it's, it's, it's not either one of us. It's the fact that there's too many of us. All right, you should just buy me an affogato and we'll call yeah. it good. If you guys have watched us before on Saturdays, um, we like to celebrate the completion of our live video by buying an affogato from the ice cream shop across the street. If you don't have the pleasure of knowing what that is, an affogato combines the two best food groups, coffee, espresso and ice cream i might try a different flavor today i usually go with salted caramel mm -hmm. last week i had a double a double shot of espresso in two scoops of i had salted espresso. caramel she was a mess let me tell you she <laughs> was a me hot mess that's yeah. what you were but today i'm gonna go just single espresso single ice cream but i might try a different flavor they have a flavor there that's, this just got serious. This stuff just got serious. They have exhausted parent. That's another good one there, which is espresso ice cream with a bourbon lace, not real bourbon, but just some kind of a. Now that would really syrup. bring the ruckus. Yeah, I may have exhausted parent with a single shot of espresso today. I'll let you know how that goes, guys. There is, I was surprised to find out that there is such a thing as too much espresso. Going down, it doesn't feel like you could ever have enough, but those jitters are real. The struggle is real if you have too much. There is such a thing. All right, so I'm not gonna do both sides. You see how that turned out. <laughs> I was gonna say, if you want to see it again, just rewind a little bit. Yeah, the exact same, but backwards. Exactly. So we have this is what we just did on the front. <coughs> Let's see where I can place that to be the best view. So we've got that going on. We did the side here with its swag down. What do you think, Jenny? Excellent. Do we have applause from the studio audience? Yes. Yeah. And the other side as well. Beautiful. So I will finish off my fourth side off camera. We'll get this guy staged. But what I want to show you now before we go today 
I'm going to be pulling out my Caron Dosh water soluble crayons again. I use those because I love them. They're very convenient. You get lots of colors, but I, I really want you guys to know that it's not, it's not the particular product here. So any paint or, you know, watercolor paint, you can water down your chalky paint. I like to use these because I have a set of 83, 84. So any color I want, I basically have, and if it's not quite right, I can mix a couple together. So that's all my crayons. Just any watercolor, any kind of a chalky paint or even an acrylic paint, whatever you have, craft paints. I like to choose ones that I think kind of are found in the background of my transfer or, or in the, the design of the transfer. This is kind of a blue purple and this color, I can't read what it is, but it looks very similar to me. So we're gonna use that one. We're gonna find a green. I think that's a pretty good green for what's in here. And then a pinky red. I think yesterday I used this and I was pretty happy with that. So just kind of looking, seeing what colors look like they belong in this design that maybe when I painted them, right? These are the colors I, I used. Because I'm using the water soluble crayons, I'm gonna use this. This is um, just a silicone mat. You could use a piece of deli paper. You could use anything at all. I just wanna get some of the pigment on there. And I have some paint brushes. Oh, paint brushes right here. So I like long bristles, long bristles on that. I'm going to take a cup of water and wet. So I'm getting that pinky pigment on my bristles. Just doing that. We're just going to do a little splatter. But I think what, you know, what counts is finding colors that look like you might have painted with them in there. Get that pretty wet. And, whoops, we're going to flick or bounce mm -hmm. or do a little of that. Mm -hmm. I think this adds a nice hand-painted look. I don't like to go crazy with it. And I don't necessarily, I don't know, eh, I'm going to leave it but I don't want it on the frame there. So I'm gonna take that off. I think that's okay in there. You don't have to live with what you get. You can wipe it off if you don't like it, but I do like to have that color all around. So then we're gonna go with the blue one. See, this is the one I did yesterday. Is that the same? It's close to the same. I think that's very much like this purpley blue in the morning glories. So I'm going to get, I'm going to do a smaller brush. The size of your drips is going to vary depending on the brush that you're using. And sometimes using another brush and kind of like that. I like it. What do you guys think? Do we have applause? Oh, yeah. Okay. Kind of fun. I like this studio audience <laughs> business. This could go to my head. Um, and finally, the green. Still messing with a little blue. And if you add a bit more water, you get different tones. So it's darker when I use less water. My green crayon. Did you did you put it away? Yeah. Stacy's very neat. It keeps us organized here in the shop. And sometimes, sometimes I lose things that way. What? Just say it. <laughs> Don't sugarcoat it. What? 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 That crayon doesn't want to come off very well. So I'm going to use a different one. 
we're going to use this one. And sometimes, I don't want to sound too weird here, but the universe uh, throws a wrench in what I'm trying to do. And I think it's telling me, no, nope, that's not the right color. So we're going to use this green instead in a little bit. So I'm not trying to find every single color, but I got the basics of the blue from those flowers, a little bit of pink, a little bit of green. And I do not know if you can see that very well. I'm going to take this camera down. It could wobble again, but we're going to come. Uh, Just hold it still for a sec. Trying to hold it still for a sec. Okay, here we go. So you can see the splatter. How will that dry then? I missed that part. It will just dry. We need to leave it alone to let it dry on its own. In my, I mean, if we took a blow dryer to it or a heat gun, we would blow the yeah. shapes into a different, and that could be a cool thing too. But where I want them just to stay the way they are, I'm going to let it dry naturally and that will keep them the same size and shape that they are right now. And you see, I think this color with these morning glories is just right. Loving all that. And it, it just gives the illusion. Add that. We're going to turn that around. Can you hear me now? I just really want to say goodbye. Um, thank you for joining me today. As I said, we'll finish this up. We'll let this dry so that the spatters stay spattery looking. And I'll do the other side. We'll get stayed stagey Stacy to do her staging magic maybe I'll call you stagey from now on so wish you wouldn't thank you for joining me I am Liz from Liza Jane Designs in Afton Minnesota it is um, the Twin Cities metro area the St. Croix River Valley a 
right next door to the great state of Wisconsin. Um, if I'm your stockist, please come and see me here in the shop. If I am not your stockist, go to the Iron Orchid Designs webpage and do the stockist locator, find someone near you. Many of us ship, I uh, ship. So, you know, if you're kind of in the area, um, just, just let us know, find somebody close to you and uh, we'll love to be your best friends, I promise. So very, very nice to see you all. And I'm trying to swipe this over. Post a pic when it's staged. Got that, Stacy? Got it. Laura would like to see it. I hope some other people would like to see it as well. Stacy, say goodbye to the people. We love you. Bring in the ruckus from Afton, Minnesota. Bring in the ruckus Bring from the ruckus. Afton. <laughs> Love Bye. you guys. Thanks for joining. You have a great Saturday as well.